tell you what, this one thing that has taught me, God is awesome. Um, I, uh, me and Brother James and Brother Stanley was over here working the other day, and we were talking about how um, we've been talking about upgrading our church for a long time, and um, we just didn't have the money to do it. We thought it was a tragedy, but God brought the money so we could redo our church. Amen. And it's been even more to me than that to see people in a fellowship hall worshiping God shows me that it's teaching us as a church we don't have to have a sanctuary to worship. Amen. Amen. We can worship anywhere. We don't have to have drums or all the fancy music stuff. We can just have a couple of voices, a piano and some bongos and a guitar, and we'll just worship God no matter what. And uh, I'm just amazed by what God's doing. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Proverbs 29, verse 18. It's the only one we're going to be at right now. Amen. I'm going to read the NIV version and then the King James version. It says, where, the NIV version says, Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom and instruction. The King, King James version says this, where there is no vision, the people will perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I'm so excited. Um, some of you know this. Yesterday, um, well, January 1st, me and my wife was your pastors for five years, which is amazing. It's, it's just crazy. Um, yesterday was my son's birthday, but yesterday was also the five-year anniversary of the first Sunday that we actually got to preach and and teach, and it was just amazing to me. I'll always remember that. But I I think about over the last five years and what God has done, and God's done a lot of things. Um, I, I honor what he done before He with Pastor James and Pastor Suggs and uh, Pastor Cobb, uh, both <coughs> Pastor Cobb, Sister Cobb, and Brother Cobb, and we can go on down the list, um, Pastor Pitts, uh, Pastor Merck. Uh, I don't want to leave nobody out, so I'm going to stop right there. But we can go all the way down the list and what God has done. And he's done amazing things here at Restoration Chapel. But I still believe, and I know it's a saying that a lot of people have used, the best is yet to come. And the reason why I believe that is because now we have the biggest opportunity that we've ever had before. You see, back in the day, amen, it seemed like everybody went to church. Everybody knew about Jesus. Everybody knew the gospel. But I come to find out, nowadays you can walk out, we can leave here today and find somebody that don't know about Jesus. Amen. We can find somebody that is hurting, somebody that is in need, somebody that is going through something in their life that, that, that feels like there's no way out. We live in a time and a place where evil seems to be taking over good, but our God will never back down. Amen. Amen. So we live in the greatest opportunity that we ever had, I believe. We have so much technology that people use for wrong, but I think that if we would just get this in our mind, we could use that for the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that this message, and I think this is amazing, I don't think some of you understand this. I have a friend that lives in the Philippines that I used to work with. She actually goes and watches Restoration Chapel's message. Do you realize from the little town of Williamson of 4,000 people, there are people in the Philippines that are watching what's going on here at Restoration Chapel. That amazes me that we have the opportunity not just to reach the hundred or so that is here, but the millions and millions across the world. But church, we've got to understand that we have a purpose. People are watching us, amen? We have a purpose. As many of you know, over the last couple of years, I, I, I sit down and, and, and during the before the new year, I pray and ask God, what does he want to see here at Restoration Chapel for the next year? And over the last five years, God has given us a vision. Some of you know it, Jesus-centered, spirit-led, community-minded. Some of y'all got that down. It took y'all five years to do it, but now you've got it down. Why am I going to mess all y'all's worlds up? Some of you got the vision to it. That was the mission. The vision was to, to, to help serve the community, to restore the knowledge and works of God. I know Sister Courtney's got that down because I ask her that all the time. She knows what it is. But now I'm about to mess her up because God has given us a new vision. He's given us 
us a new vision. He's given us a new mission. And church, I believe if we take a hold of this mission, if we take a hold of this vision, that God can let us see do things that we've never done before. Let us reach people that we've never reached before. And this is going to be simple, and this is going to be easy. But here is the new vision. Here's the new mission for Restoration Chapel. We will reflect Jesus to the lost and found for restoration in Christ. We will reflect, not reflect the Church of God of Prophecy. Not reflect Restoration Chapel. Not reflect Pastor Bobby. We will reflect Jesus to the lost and found for restoration in Christ. As I begin praying, God began to just throw all this stuff in me and got me scriptures and all these things. And then I was so excited. My wife, I've been sending her emails at work. And she's like, I got to work, Bobby. Leave me alone. I've been sending this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. And she's looking at it. And, and I just begin to think, how many people just need to see Jesus? They need to stop seeing us and they need to see Jesus. Amen. They Listen, I know I love to shout. I love to be saved. I love to be a saint of God. I love being filled with the Holy Ghost. I love when we have a baptism movement of the Holy Ghost. But church, I've only noticed that happens in the church. And people outside the church need to see Jesus. Amen. They need to see a reflection of what we're talking about. Amen. They need to see who we are. This morning, I want us to take a look at our what. Our who and our why, so that we can understand how important this vision is to live by. First is the what. Our what is to reflect Jesus. Amen. That's what we're going to do, church. I love, man, I, I want to say how excited I was. I know God did this in a crazy way. This morning I was so scared when Sister Lori called and Sister Tammy called, and it was like an hour before church, and I didn't know what to do. And, and God said, well, just go teach the kids what you're going to teach the adults. So, you know what we did? Because I love the color, right? We've got pictures out, amen. And, and if they're colored, I'm going to color too, amen, uh, because we're going to do this right. And I told them to draw a picture of yourself. Hey, I know I look good. No, I, I draw a picture of yourself and, 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 and what you think you look like. And they told me, well, Bobby, I need a mirror. So I called. Yeah, I used my phone in church. I called Brandon Salguero. I said, bring me a mirror. Amen. And he brought me a mirror out to the children's house. And we all drew ourselves. And it was amazing. Uh, I, I, Noah was sitting beside me. And he drew it. He was so excited. He said, I'm going to put a baseball with mine. Amen. And, and Elijah, he because Elijah's a little confused right now, he drew himself. He drew the Clemson Tiger. And he drew cocky. And we all got along because we reflect Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Uh, we, we understand no matter which size you are, we're going to show love of Jesus in your heart. Amen. And, and I drew me and I drew, I drew a little bird, but they told me it looked like a squirrel, so I don't know what it is. And, and we were out just chilling. And on the back of it, I told them to write this verse. And it's amazing because I, I, I just thought everybody could spell. So we had to spell it all together. Genesis 1 and 27. Amen. And I want you just to remember this verse real quick. Genesis 1 and 27 says this. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God created you in his image. Amen. I was out there with the kids. I said, now what do you see in your picture, right? And they said, I see me. I love it. We talking about me. And I said, yeah, but who created you? And they said, God. And I said, now read that scripture again. And, and I love it. Sister Lisa's little girl, uh, she put up her picture. And she said, you don't only see me, but you see God. Aww. And you yeah, see Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yeah. You know what? When we're in this world, you should be able to see God in Jesus. Amen. When they see you, they should see. I know you're looking at this mirror, and it's a little dusty. Amen. Because you ain't perfect. Amen. Right. You ain't perfect. Amen. You're a little dirty. You're a little messed up. Amen. Praise God. If you don't think you messed up, you're in the wrong church. So just go ahead and leave. Uh -huh. you, you're a little messed up. You know, we, we're all a little messed up. We're not perfect. We all have issues. We got a little dirt on us. But you know what? Our goal is not to reflect ourselves. It is to turn this mirror up and reflect Jesus Christ that says, hey, yeah, I might not be perfect, but I'm in the progress of walking with Jesus. I'm in the progress of reflecting my God. The 
one that says, hey, when I fall, I just lift it up a little higher because I'm there with you no matter what. Church, I, I think we live in a world where the people are not mad that we're saved. They're mad because we think we're perfect. Oh, Amen. They're mad that we think that we're perfect. We think that we got it all together, but then we don't reflect what we call everybody else out on. We like to call everybody else on their sin, but when it comes to our sin, we don't want nobody to talk about that. We don't want to act like we got issues. We don't want to act like we got problems. But church, when you're reflecting Jesus, you say, listen, it's not about my issues because I'm working on them. I'm keeping my eyes to the heaven. I'm keeping my eyes to Jesus because I made it his image. So I'm going to walk a little closer with him. I'm going to walk a little with it, holding his hand and realize even when I'm in the valley, he's still there. We're going to reflect Jesus, church. That's what it's all about, showing this world who Jesus is. You see, the image of God is not so much that, that the man bears as something that man is. Some scholars have looked at the Hebrew meaning and favors this translation. God created man as his image over God created man in, in his image. You have been created as his image. Amen. Listen, I'm a Wimburner. And I'm a James, amen. And that can be a scary combination. <laughs> I got the hard headness of a of a James, amen. And I'm hoping I, I'm working on getting that workability of a whimper, amen. And you put those two things together, and you got some trouble, amen. You got Low Country and, and Low Country of South Carolina, the Florence area, the, the Darlington area, and then you got Williamson and Pelzer. You got that in it, amen. You put those two together, you don't know what you're going to get, amen. You get me, amen. But you know what? I made in those images. But the best image I was made in is God's image. Amen. When, listen, people are going to label you no matter what you've done. But you know what? If you still walk in His image, it don't matter what they label you because you forget what you're doing. But you remember why you walk in Amen. You remember even though there's people that label you, you still love them because they label Jesus. Oh, Jesus. They told Jesus that he wasn't the Messiah, that he wasn't the Son of God. They put him on a cross. And listen, if they're going to label Jesus, then they're surely going to label us unperfect people. But you got to reflect him. Reflect him. Genesis is one man does not have the image of God, nor he is made in the image of God, but as himself the image of God. Humankind then was created to be a copy or a graphic image of the creator. And then Adam and Eve disobeyed. And it did not remove the image of God from us, but it disfigured. It made the image a little dirty. It made it a little unclear. So church, we need to go through restoration so we can get back to that image. You see the great thing about the image of a mirror? Amen. If it's not broken, guess what you can do? Amen. Make it a little bit clearer, right? You know what God's doing in your life? You ask God into your life, it doesn't mean you're completely clean. That means this corner is getting a little bit cleaner. That's right. Praise God. That means it, then you come back to him again and say, God, Lord, I messed up again. He said, that's all right, amen. Have you ever realized you can clean this mirror once and it can be sparkling, but three days later you go back to it, it might have some toothpaste on it, amen. It might have some more dust on it, amen. It might have some, you know what you have to do? You have to clean it a little bit more, amen. You, you might have to get a little bit dirty, but Jesus already got dirty. He already paid the price. He's got the Windex ready, amen. He's got the towel ready. All you got to do is call upon his name, and he says, I'm there to make sure that you reflect the image of God and not the image of everybody. You know what? Goes Father, just you just reflecting the image. This church needs to reflect the image of God. I've learned very quickly that sometimes we come to church just to come to church. All right. What are we reflecting in church? Some people come to church and they just come just to be seen. But do you come to actually reflect the image of God? You know what? That means your worship should reflect the image of God. Oh, Lord. If Jesus was here right now, would he be accepting of your worship this morning? With, with you Sunday school teachers, you, 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 you 
ones that have you, few ones that have, uh, are part of a committee here. Would, if Jesus was in that committee, would you be reflecting what he was doing? Sometimes I had to look at God and say, am I reflecting God? Because, listen, it's not about me. This church, this church is not about you. That's where we get bad emails. <laughs> this church is about Jesus. Yeah. This church is about God. Would you walk up into heaven and throw your piece of paper down in his, in his house? Would, would you walk up into heaven and say, oh, Jesus, there's a hole over there. You going to take care of it? Would you walk up into heaven and say, well, you know what? I only got a dollar a day and I got to get a Big Mac. So, Jesus, you know I can't give you my dollar a day. No. You need to reflect Jesus in everything that you do. In your worship, in your giving, in your time, in everything that you should be reflecting Jesus. Church, we should be reflecting. If, you, if you're part of a worship team, it ain't about your talent. If you are a speaker here at Restoration Church, it's not about your talent, amen. It's about giving it to God, amen. It's about giving. Listen, you're not here for the audience. You're here for Jesus, amen. When you sing, when you preach, when you teach, when you greet, when you're doing that, you're not greeting somebody. You're greeting Jesus, amen. Your audience is one. That one is Jesus Christ, and that is what reflecting God is all about. If we would give our 110% in God, if we give everything that we have, our worship, our time, our praise, everything, our preaching, our teaching to God, think about what God would do it. Because God takes something small and makes it big. Just ask the little boy that had a couple of fishes and, and, and some bread. He brought it to him and he was able to feed 5,000. Just think if we would just have a little bit more praise or a little bit more faith or a little bit more surrender. What God can do with that? Amen. We need to reflect Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 says this, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. You are an ambassador to Christ. You know what that word ambassador means? I looked it up because I love definitions. Amen. I know some of you don't like definitions. Some of you don't say I'm not in school. But you know what an ambassador is? It's a representative. You are representing Jesus Christ. So why are you not reflecting him? Church God has showed us if we're going to be a church that God has called us to be, we must reflect Jesus everywhere. We should worship like Jesus. We should pray like Jesus. We should love like Jesus. We should surrender like Jesus. Church, we should look like Jesus. After we do know the what, now the who. I love this, the who. Go ahead. Amen. <laughs> lost and found. See, first you got to go out to the lost. You know the reason why you have to go out to the lost? Because God had Jesus, had passion for the lost. Amen. Right. Some of us just want to be around a bunch of found people. But you know what, church? We should be going after the lost. Amen. That's Jesus sat with tax collectors. Jesus sat with prostitutes. Jesus sat with adulterers. Jesus sat with unclean people. Church, if we're reflecting Jesus, then we should go after the lost. Amen. It is time that we stop playing tag and start playing hide and go seek and start finding those that are lost. Most of us want to run around and tag people that are already found. But church, if we can't find the, unlo uh, the lost, then guess what? All we're doing is coming into a social club. Church, we got to get back to that. You see, the lost is God's passion. And you know that I truly believe that this, we are not reflecting God if we cannot reach the lost. Luke 19 and 10 says this, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to go after the lost. He, listen, I know you don't like the sin. That's okay, but stop talking about it. Just love on somebody. That's right. I know some of you don't understand why people are mixed up sexually. Stop talking about it and love on them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. I know some of you don't like those people that gossip. 
I know you don't like it, but you know what? Love them. Stop throwing them under the bus and just give them some love. Amen. I love what he said. He said, seek the lost. Do you realize the lost means everybody? It don't just mean white people. It don't mean just Hispanics. It don't just mean black people. It means everybody, right? It don't just mean mixed. It can be anybody. Whoever is lost. Church, if we would start realizing that everybody loves the same color, we wouldn't have to worry about that anyway. Amen. Amen. We got to realize that. We got to realize that God wants us to go after those that are lost. He came to save the lost. In church, I believe that as Christians, we become so clean that we don't want to get dirty. I, we were across the street. I didn't realize how much salt does comes out of a salt. <laughs> I love Brother James and Brother Stanley because they're the most patient people with me. Because I mean, just I don't know what's going on. Amen. I've never built anything in my life, but they're doing an awesome job, and I want to get right in there with them. Brother Brent, he, he wouldn't let me ride through the glue on the dolly this time. Amen. Y'all get that later. Uh, and Brother Jerry, he, I've been asking him so many questions. He'd go up and down the ladder, and I'd just be asking him questions. You know, it's amazing. What it but I never forget how dirty you get by building something. I had sawdust all over me yesterday, or Friday. And all over. I didn't know why. I was, I was amazed at that how dirty I could get. You realize that sometimes to get things clean, you have to get dirty. That means sometimes you might have to minister to the people that are not like you. Jesus, as a matter of fact, when the woman was about to be stoned, actually got down in the dirt and began to draw something. And then they, and, and then he said, whoever without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says he got back down and drew something again. You know what? It might have been what he was writing, but you know what I thought he was trying to tell us? I don't mind getting dirty for you. I don't mind getting the dirt for you. Church, if you don't mind getting the dirt, why don't we do that? If we're going to reflect Jesus, that means we have to go after those that are lost. But it don't just stop with those that are lost. Don't think I'm leaving you out. Because a lot of churches center on, on people that are lost, and that is great. But you know what? When you're found, you still need Jesus. Praise You still need Jesus. Listen, I don't want us to become a church that is so big on going after the lost, we forget about those that have already gotten saved. Because you need to grow. Amen. Uh, my, my little one, Tanner, I, I know that he needs to grow. Listen, at, when he was born, he couldn't walk. I could have picked him up and sat him down. He would have just failed. Amen. That would have just been wrong, right? But you know what we do with a lot of Christians? We get them saved and we just pick them up and just let them go. And we wonder why they fall. You know what we're going to do? We're going to reflect Jesus to the people that are found, too. That means we're going to worship like Jesus, amen? To be, we're going to develop like Jesus. You know what Jesus did? Jesus began to teach people and began to let them grow up under him. And I love it. The one that messed up the most, and we'll talk about this next week. You need to come next week. Invite your friends next week. The sermon message next week is why people hate church. Just come next week. It's going to be great, amen? Why people hate church. You come next week. But you know the reason why? It's so funny. I love it because he got Peter, the one that messed up, the one that cut somebody's ears off, the one that, the one that, 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 that denied him three times, the one that, that didn't believe it, you know, the one that wanted to walk on water but still sunk and we like to blame him, all of this stuff. You know what? He, he said, I will build my church on you because you know who I am. And you know what? Jesus developed him. And on the day of Pentecost, you know who stood up? Peter. You know who preached? Peter. You know all the people that got saved? But Peter got up and actually let God use him. Amen. You know, we're found. We need to develop who we are. That's the reason why we need to start getting in groups and serving. Amen. If you're a member of this church, listen, you're progressing. I understand you're not perfect. But don't just sit on a pew. Come to Bible study. Amen. Wednesday night Bible study has been awesome. You need to come to Wednesday night Bible study. I know it's a busy time of the week. I know you got kids. I got kids too, amen. I know you got an American out of home home that night or the voice or something like that. I understand. I'm just DVR. If you don't have a DVR, I do, and I'll record it for you. You can come to my house and watch it, amen, and, and we'll watch it again. But you know what? You, you need to be here on Wednesdays and Tuesday nights and on Sunday nights when we have community groups. I love it. Everybody said, we're growing, we're growing. We need to know people. We need to know people. And then we started community groups, and everybody said, I ain't going. And then you complain why you don't know nobody. Amen. Come to the community groups. 
Get to connect with one another. Get to know one another. Church, that's what it's all about, growing. Not just for the lost, but for the found. Yeah, you've been saved, but have you been sanctified? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Have, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You need it again, amen. You need a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost, amen. You need a fresh movement inside of you. So church, don't stop growing just because you're found. We're going to reflect Jesus to the lost and to the found because we realize and I love what Moses did. He went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh gave him all these things. You can take this, but you can't take that. You can take that, but you can't take that. You know what Moses said? No hoof left behind. I'm taking everything. I'm taking the animals. I'm taking the men. I'm taking the women. I'm taking the children. I'm going to take them all because he realized we can't leave anything back. We can't leave the found just to go out to the lost. Because you know what? We're going to run into a time when we ain't got enough found to reach the lost. We're going to reflect Jesus to the lost and the found. Now let's go to the why. A restoration in Christ. We are called Restoration Chapel. Amen. And we want people to be restored, not through us, but through Christ. We want people's lives. Do you realize when Adam and Eve messed up, then we need to go through a process of restoration. We need to go through that. Jesus was sent here. <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says this. As far as you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And are the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, and following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We are by nature deserving of wrath. But Ephesians 2, 4, and 10 helps us out. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming age we might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressions in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is a gift from God, not by your works, so that you can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us. You want restoration? You come to Jesus. Now, I hope these people don't get embarrassed, but all right. Go to this next page. This is Brandon. And y'all all know Brandon, right? Brandon's great. Um, I don't know if you know Brandon's story. Brandon has, has, has an illness that he shouldn't be alive anymore. This is a why. Because God has moved through him. And I'll never forget, I think this was about two months after they told him he would never walk again. He walked into church. Amen. This leg right here has no hip. <coughs> and he walked in the church. As soon as he could get back to church, you know what he did? He went back to church because he knew he wanted restoration in Christ. He reflected Jesus. Go to the next one. Go ahead. Amen. This is Tristan. Amen. <laughs> Some of you will laugh at this picture, but I love this picture. Tristan right here, this is the coolest thing ever because Chris. Tristan's first time here, he came with a young man, and they were sitting behind me and Sister Sherry. And I'll never forget, um, that day I think it was Brandon and Johnny, and, and, and Leo was out there for some reason. I don't know why he was out there. But Leo was out there, and, and, and Preston was out there too. And I, and, I, and I began to preach, and we was talking about pouring in to broken jars and pouring into jars, jars that were empty. And I pulled those guys across. And I began, and I recognized Brandon, and I recognized Johnny, and I recognized Preston, and I recognized Leo. And then there's this big 6'4 <laughs> giant there. I didn't know who he was. And I was scared to death. You can ask my wife. I told her after service I was scared to death because I thought he'd never come back. That day he went down to the altar and got saved. A couple months later, this is the picture that happened. He was baptized. Amen. He's in our college age class. He's trying to serve. As you notice, 
he's my strong man. I don't like picking up this thing. He comes and picks this thing up, brings it to the. He's trying to do all that he can do for Christ. That's restoration in Christ. He's not perfect. He's going to mess up. He's a little dirty. But the progression that God is moving through him, because somebody reflected the heart of God to him, reflected Jesus to him, even when he was lost, and even now that he's found, he's still growing in Christ. He's being restored through Christ. Check out this next picture. Amen. This is Brother Jackie. I love Brother Jackie. I don't know how long Brother Jack has been here, amen, but I love him because uh, he, he understands that people need to know about Jesus. Yeah. He understands. He, he, he don't, listen, we, he's over Sunday school, and he's got that thing on lockdown, amen. You know that if you're in Sunday school class because he comes in your class five times to count, amen. But you know what? God has restored him, and he is reflecting the heart of Jesus to see people grow. He don't mind. Listen, I remember Brother Jack and his sister Marilyn and his sister Myrtle when me and Sister Sherry and Brother Jeff and, 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 and um, uh, 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 Sister Nicole came in here. I remember those. I, they didn't look at it like that. I remember we wasn't perfect. We were, we were, yeah. I'll never forget the time that Sister Arlene had a Christmas play and she put us in it and we gave her such a hard time. She, I thought she was going to kick us out of church herself. Amen. <laughs> But people like this reflected Jesus to us. And now we're where we're at today. Look at this next picture. Go ahead. This is Kim. <laughs> yeah, I love this picture also. This is great. Because Kim, she, she just like, God, moving her heart. And through her boys, she started coming to church. And she got saved. And now she's on the greeting team. She, she don't want to miss, amen. She's calling people and checking on people and, and finding out they're okay. And, and, and just because somebody reflected Jesus to her. And now she, when she was lost and even when she's found, and now there's restoration in her. And she went and got baptized. And this is the happiest I've ever seen somebody get baptized. She come up, she heard, I had to watch it. I almost got punched in the face. <laughs> She was so excited about it. This is what the heart of God looks like. Go to the next one. I just love this family. Not just one, but all of them. I um, they probably went through the toughest two year, uh, two months of their life at one time. And Sister Tammy got moved to the Haven Arrest for some reason. She was at the Clemson store, and for some reason, they wanted her to move to Williamston. She moved to Williamston, and she began talking to Sister Evelyn, and I'll never forget the day they came down, because they told me they're coming by the Spring Water Festival tent. The 150 degrees that everybody hates going to, because you're giving out cold water, and everybody's like, oh my goodness. And they came down there, and we began to talk to them. This picture right here is the day that they gave, they, they committed to the church. They decided to be a part of this church. Now they're greeters, now they're sound workers. Johnny, if you get here at 9.15, and if even if it's cold, for some reason, I tell him to stay inside, but he still go outside and wave to people. And he might be a little tired while he's doing it, but he's trying. And he's trying to show heart of Jesus. Because God moved in their lives. And even in their struggle, God has done so much for them. I know it's rough. They're not perfect. Even though they have memories that they don't want to think about, God is still doing something inside of them. You want to know how I know that? Just look at Leo. I know he's not out here, but just talk to him for a few minutes. He'll tell you how great God is. They come up here and they want to help me all summer long. I'll never forget, we, we decided to do Bible study one summer. That was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. <laughs> you know the reason why? Because they called me constantly. Are we doing it today? Are we doing it today? And then after we do it, they said, well, you need help cleaning the church. You need help doing this. You need help doing that. I want to learn how to play the piano. I want to learn how to play the drums. I want to do this. I want to be a part of the praise team. That's Jesus moving in their life. You want to know another why? Go to the next one. Church, to see a youth group on Tuesday night give up their Tuesday night because we couldn't be out there on Wednesday 
come up here and worship God no matter what. You see, a children's ministry, that is just blowing up. Right now, we all just need to say a quick prayer for Sister Nicole, because I think she's the only one out there. She's got about 45 kids. <laughs> about 30, but, but she is ministering to them, and our, our, our children's workers are this is a why, because there's too many young people that are just saying, you ain't got no future. You just need to go out and do whatever you want to do. And we got kids that don't have families, that don't have a mommy or a daddy, that, don't, that, that are just being brought because somebody took the time to bring them. This is reflecting the, the, the heart of Jesus. This is reflecting to the lost and found. This, man, I wish you could have been in my Sunday school class this morning. It was amazing just to hear these kids talk about how great God is and who Jesus is. And my son, who's in the children's ministry, who every morning before he goes to, uh, goes to school, he looks at his, at his mom and says, Mom, let's pray over the school day. Not because of what we just taught him, but because there was a group of people that loved him enough that taught him how great prayer was and how mighty a God is, how he prayed. My son, who is six years old, prays protection over his primary school. These people reflect Jesus. Look at this next one. These two are great people, and I'm not going to talk about this, but I'm talking about this one right here. <laughs> 2002. 2003, I graduated. I decided to go to a chapel at Anderson University. And something told me I need to go to church. The only church I could think of was this church. Not because I was so excited about coming. It was just I felt like I had to go to church. And this is the one that my great-grandfather went to. So I went. And I'll never forget Brother Suggs. Sister Suggs, I wish she was here this morning. I was so happy to see her. And we, they would talk to, they would take us out to lunch, dinner, drive us in the Jaguar, get us lost, because he didn't know where we were going. But he would love on us. One night we got saved, and thought that was great, but you know what? He still poured into us. He said, why don't you start out in the children's ministry? And we taught children. A little boy named Hunter. He was so scared, he would hide up under a table. And we would go and talk to Brother Sutton. We don't know what to do. He said, just love him. My wife would start singing, wanted to sing in the church. She didn't sing Southern Gospel. And so she sung by CD. <coughs> Brother Suggs said, that's fine. We didn't know what to wear. We was wearing blue jeans. We was wearing shorts. We was wearing t-shirts. And back then, it didn't happen that way. But you know what? Brother Suggs says, that was fine. We're still going to love him. Don't you say anything to him. We're going to love him. We're going to guide him. Then he said, hey, we need a youth pastor. Why don't you all be a youth pastor? And then we became a youth pastor. Then one day, I'll never forget, he asked me to pray before an offering. And I told him no. Literally, in the middle of everybody, I said no. And he said, that's okay. He never disciplined me, but you know what he did? He began to pray for me. And a couple months later, he said, I need you to preach one night. I would not be here today if somebody did not reflect Jesus to me. I would not be your pastor if somebody didn't reflect Jesus to me. And I see a group of young people that we just saw and a group of children that are growing up to be world changers. Amen. And we need to reflect Jesus to them. Amen. I see people in this community that don't know it yet. They're lost. But I see them being world changers that we need to, to reflect Jesus to. Amen. Amen. I see people that are in our schools and our jobs that can be world changers. That can not only just change Williamston, Pelzer, West Pelzer, Shedder, Anderson. They can change South Carolina. They can change the United States. They can be world changers. But all they need to see is not us. They need to see Jesus, church. Yes. And I tell you, this vision is set a fire inside of me. We need to reflect Jesus to the lost and found so we can have restoration in Christ. Because church, one day, great men like Brother Suggs and Brother James uh, and, and so on down the line, they're going to go to heaven. They're going to have their reward. And we need another generation to stand up and say, I'm not living for this worldly stuff. I'm not living. I'm not sexting. I'm not uh, confused about my identity. I'm not doing this because somebody reflected Jesus to them. Not their opinions, not their thoughts, but they reflected Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. And they have been transformed and restored by the power of Jesus. And now they're set on fire for God. They're not perfect. They're going to fall. They're going to make mistakes. But we're still going to love them like Jesus. Amen. 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 Church, our church needs to be a place of reflection and restoration. Reflect Jesus, restore people. You've seen the Jesus Center Spirit led me and mine, you'll start seeing that. Reflect Jesus, restore people. Because I truly believe God wants to do something. This morning I want to let you know, because I we're gonna do it to the lost and found. You don't know who Jesus is. You can never reflect it. You gotta have, listen. You gotta give your heart to him. Truly, listen, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm asking you to be broken. I'm asking you to be messed up. I'm asking you to have issues. Amen. Because that's what God wants to use. Your broken, messed up, jacked up life, he wants to use that. Change your life forever. He wants to restore you. Church, we're going to reflect Jesus, but we can't reflect him if we don't know. Mm -hmm. Sister Sherry comes to the piano, and I know I'm probably late. I don't know. But you know what? I really believe that this vision is going to set us on fire, but we've got to take hold of it. We've got to grasp hold of it and go this, this route. Just go with it. I ask you that this morning to open up your heart and ask God to come into your heart so you can reflect him. Reflect who he is. And let him restore you. The scripture says, and I love it, he was made in the image of God. <coughs> That's great. I love God. He was made in the image of him. But because of sin, our image is a little blurry, it's a little dirty. So you know what we got to do? We gotta come to him and let him clean it up. <laughs>